What happens to people who have never heard of Jesus? I mean truly never heard of Jesus. Like the American Indians before they had any contact with Europeans, or perhaps some sort of lost tribe in Africa who's never heard the gospel. Do they get a ticket straight to hell? So this question often gets phrased as an argument against Christianity. And this argument has been known to go something like this. Essentially it says, if Jesus is the only way to heaven, and these people have no access to Jesus, then it seems like they all go to hell. Like entire ethnic groups go to hell without any sort of possibility of having heaven available to them. And that just doesn't seem very fair. So it seems like either God is unjust, or perhaps that God doesn't actually exist. Now in the past, I've, I've thought about answering this question in this way. I think we have fantastic reasons to think that both God exists and that God is just. And if those reasons are good, then it's rational to trust that God has some sort of just way of handling this. Now a lot of folks run with this, right? They start speculating at this point. So Christian folks are very famous for speculating here. They'll give all kinds of arguments like believing in purgatory or this thing called Abraham's bosom or even some concept of Christian reincarnation or the idea that somehow these people get a second chance after they're dead or um, some sort of thing works out in the afterlife or maybe there's levels to heaven, right? Lots of different speculation is given by Christians on this topic. And what's kind of interesting here is I think that at this point we have to actually admit ignorance. Right? The Bible does not talk about any of these concepts and there's no way of knowing whether we just have really cool hypotheses. Hypotheses? Hypothi? I don't know. Hypothi. Hypothi. Yeah. What? We're what? going with okay. hypothi. All right. uh, or whether hypotheses. We're just... There you go. Or whether we're barking up the wrong tree. Now the Bible does actually have some things to say that are relevant here. Um, so let's take a look at some of those. Okay, so the Bible mentions two ways in which God's existence and properties can be known. Uh, Christian likes to refer to these as general revelation and specific revelation. Now, general revelation is that feeling you might get when you go outside and you look up and see the sky and you realize that um, there's something bigger out there, something more than just you. Or that feeling that you get um, that your life is more than just existence, that you're meant for something more. Yeah, so essentially any argument I give on this channel is usually falling into the category of general revelation. It's philosophical reasoning that ultimately ends in the conclusion, therefore God exists. So specific revelation is just that, a little bit more specific. It requires the Bible uh, for, uh, for knowledge, uh, for or knowledge least, of existence such as the, Jesus and the Holy Trinity. Right, at least the Bible is one example of special revelation. No matter how good you are at philosophy, you're not going to figure out that Jesus is, is God's son. Right? That's something that you have to actually be told, right. aka something has to be revealed through specific revelation. So at this point, with those two concepts under our belt, my friend Josh came up with a really cool analogy. And it really it piggybacks off of those concepts. Here's essentially his idea. He says that people who have general and specific revelation are held to higher standards than people who have general revelation alone. And he gives an analogy to support this, so let's look at that analogy and then let's see whether or not there's any biblical reason to support that. Alright, so imagine this scenario. You're sitting with your friend and all of a sudden lights go out. You think you hear a burglar, you think you hear somebody in the house, so you flail around and you hit your friend in the face. Okay, now since it's dark, your friend is more likely to forgive you because you did this on accident. You know, you didn't mean to hit him. Uh, he is less likely to forgive you though if all of a sudden you flailed out and you hit him and the lights are on and you did it on purpose. So the more knowledge you get, the more accountability you get. Kind of reminds me of Spider-Man there. Um, so there's a passage in Acts. Uh, let me give you a little background here. Um, Paul is talking about how people used to worship idols. They'd craft idols with their hands, make them out of gold, make them out of silver, and they'd worship them. And it has this interesting verse in uh, Acts 17.30. It says, In the past God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. And what's interesting about that is that it says, In the past God overlooked their worshiping of idols, as in he knew that they were totally doing something wrong and he was overlooking it here. And the reason he overlooked it is because they were ignorant. So it seems like there is some biblical precedent here for God um, handling people who are ignorant different than he handles those who have more information, or handling those who have more evidence of God's existence different than those who lack that, those same opportunities. Now there's some more verses that are really interesting here. One in Luke chapter 10 has been boggling my mind forever, right? It's got a huge question mark beside it in my Bible because it's a very strange passage. 
And essentially it goes a little something like this. Um, Jesus has sent out some disciples and uh, they're performing miracles. They're doing all kinds of wondrous signs. And this town still does not accept um, Jesus here. So they, they're not convinced, even though they have massive amounts of evidence. And then here's where the verse gets interesting. Verse 12 says, I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Hang on. Wasn't Sodom the town that was known for gang rape? Right. So this is a very wicked town. And yet they're judged less harshly than this other town not known for wickedness. Because that town um, has seen God's miracles and still doesn't believe. So as they gain more knowledge, more evidence of God, they become held to higher standards. Which is exactly what my friend's analogy was saying. But I think perhaps the most helping, helpful verse in favor of his analogy is uh, Luke 12, 48. A little bit later on in the same book here. It says, From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. That sounds exactly like what he was saying. So I think there might actually be some biblical support for my friend's analogy here. And I'd love to know what you guys think about that. And as always, test everything, hold on to the good. So sometimes this argument comes off as argument against Christianity. Uh, and you may have heard an argument sound a little something like this. You said the word argument six times. <laughs> this question. Sometimes this argument is an argument. Argument. <laughs> I want to be more than just face. like, okay, so there's a burglar and you just <laughs> punching your friend in the face by accident and it's dark out and it's dark. You know, your friend is... <laughs> All right. Aaron! <laughs> Both of us keep saying okay every time it's our turn to talk. Oh.